Hi everyone and welcome to Ridge Print and we're starting a new build series where we're going to build a Mark III R2. Uh, as you might have seen in my video back in June, my Styrene R2 at uh, 7 years old uh, succumbed to the heat in the car and warped. Uh, fortunately it's not really recoverable, it was June overhaul anyway so it's a good excuse to build a new one. As you can see behind me I've got all the pieces printed and uh, but in this episode I'm going to show you the cuts I made to the Fusion files, Mark's Fusion files and also what settings I used in Cura. So heads up, there's no actual building in this episode. Next episode, I promise there will be. And um, we're actually building two Mark III R2s. There's my replacement one, but we're also building a second one that will be auctioned off for charity at some point when it is finished. Um, so keep an eye on that one. And um, we'll be building both at the same time. So you might see both in shot, or you might see one in shot, but basically there are two being built. Uh, they are both Mark III's but slightly different in that the charity one has been printed on the 500mm print bed. My one has been printed on a 300mm print bed, so in more pieces. Uh, other than that, they are functionally identical. Um, oh, no, sorry, mine has a back door. The charity one doesn't. It's a solid, solid back door. Other than that, functionally identical. So, uh, why don't you join me and see how we get on. Right then. Uh, so this is the fusion files from Mr. Badly Printed Droids, patron. Uh, if you get the right level, you can actually have access to the files to modify uh, if you need to. Uh, in this case, I'm yeah, I've modified the the Mark III files to cut them up to fit on a 300 mil bed. So let's get rid of what I don't need at the moment. So let's sketches. Right. So I didn't modify the dome. Or the doors, or the greeblies, the data port, the charge port, the bread pans, the vent assembly, utility arm, the server arms, all the legs. And then I didn't modify the top ring either, or the slip ring ring. So essentially the Mark III body, if you don't know, is three rings. So like, top ring, middle ring, bottom ring which is fine if you have a three a uh, 500 mil print bed i don't um let me just hide the skirt as well uh, i don't so there is on the on the onedrive file there is a 300 mil cut of the mark three but it doesn't have the uh, back door removable back door there's also a 200 mil cut for prusas and ender threes um which i think does have the back door but it's so many pieces, um, you know, I could just print them bigger. So I decided to basically cut my own. Uh, and I got, I did that by, first of all, getting the fusion files of the Mark III with the back door, removable back door. And then I imported the STL, uh, don't have it in here anymore, but I imported the STL pieces of the 300mm cut with the integrated back panel. And then lined it up over the top and then essentially all i've done is i've cut um the body in those same places so the cuts are, in, are as close as i can get to the exact same places uh the difference being on the uh back, removable back panel which is these pieces here um on the 300 mil cut i believe the cut is here i can't quite remember i think no the cut no the cut is still there yeah the cut is still here so essentially all I've done is I've moved the cut slightly over this way a bit more. I think it was here from memory. Moved it slightly over here a bit more to give a bit more of a... Um, a bit more of a, a printable area to start to, for it to print up on. Uh, rather than sort of you know, trying to print from here onwards. Um, yeah, so that's, that's literally all I've done. I just sliced it into essentially quarters and... If I just show you what else I've done. Can you see here? I've got the little holes. I've cut those in. And they're for the grub screws. I thought, well, they worked well for Chopper that, um, in Mike's design. So I've retrofitted them in. Into this split design. And yeah, generally they seem to have worked okay. So, 
And so it's, it's three rings, and then each ring's been split down to roughly four pieces. Um, ring three is uh, one, two, three, four, five, it's six pieces. Um, the other ones are four pieces. Uh, it's only six because of the utility arms and the shoulder pieces, uh, the shoulder hub. Uh, it's just the way it's, just the way it ends up splitting. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially it. That's all, all I've done. Um, once I'm happy that the pieces are okay... I'll ask Mike to host them on the OneDrive file along with all the others so everybody else can use them. Uh, oh, that's the other thing I've done. If I zoom in on a cut here, you notice there's a gap just here. And that's, I'm following Mike's design pattern where he did the Gonk Droid uh, Fusion 360 tutorial on building a Gonk Droid. And he said, where are you cutting parts up for printing? He traditionally used like a 0.4 mil gap between the cut parts and that's to allow for the squish of the pieces so when it goes back together it fits as intended and you're not having to sand away so that's what i've done there um i haven't obviously made any changes to these to the, the horizontal cuts because they're fine um so yeah that's essentially it and i also cut the back door into three pieces so the top middle and bottom i probably could have printed more in one piece but i don't want to risk it getting like a layer shift halfway through or yeah it's just easier just to do this and i try to make the splits along a panel line so there's, uh, there's less you know i don't have to try and cover up this panel line at this split because it's actually a panel line whereas here i can just it's a tiny little bits cover cover up and same down here as well um obviously a lot of these cuts may be harder to cover but that's the nature of print 3d printing so that's the body, and then I'll quickly go to Cura, and we'll talk about the um, the, the print settings I've used. Right, so we're in Cura, and for the most part, I followed the standard printing settings that Mike suggested. So it's a 0.2 layer height, 20% infill, and I'm doing three walls and three top and bottom layers. The... Can you not see my cursor? Hang on. There we go. Can you see my cursor now? Let's try it again. Yeah. 20, uh, 2, 2, 0.2 mil layer height, 20% infill, three walls, uh, three top and bottom layers. Uh, I do a zigzag pattern. And then I use triangle infill. Uh, that's just for the, the main body pieces. And then if I load up one of the other pieces. So here we go. I load up the ankles. So this is I need the ankles to be beefier. I don't want them to break. Uh, if need, you know. Uh, so we put more walls. So we're still doing a 0.2 mil layer height. We're doing 25% infill. But we're doing six walls. And six top and bottom layers. Uh, the infill is still triangles. And the idea being that around this point here uh, there are as many walls as possible rather than infill before it meets here uh, i know doug um when he did his he did, this is essentially all walls all the way so it's touching here uh, uh i think it's probably i might I probably should have done that but i think the amount i think eight walls is enough especially as it's only a small gap there and it's quite thick going all the way through so it should be okay um so I've done that for the ankles, which are probably where it experiences a lot of stress. And I've done the same for the shoulder hubs as well. Again, where there's a lot more stress uh, meeting meeting the rest of the body. And for the... I'll load up the shoulder inserts that go on the inside of R2 itself. Right, so these are the shoulders that go inside... The sort of shoulder modules that go inside the body and connect to the hubs, and then the hubs connect to the legs. So again, this is where there's a lot of stress and doing four walls four top and bottom layers 20 percent infill doesn't sound like a lot but combine that with all the other pieces put together it should be pretty strong um so yeah uh that's what i ended up doing and uh yeah so i did a lot of printing and i'll show you the results in a minute Okay, so after a lot of printing and reprinting and misprints and filament changes and 
you name it I've done it we have a large pile of pieces of R2 um, close those back down chopper um, yeah so that's the result of two and a half months with continuous printing no but yeah two months of continuous printing more or less so that's all the main body pieces and you just got to just got to glue it all together now um, yeah and then well glue it together stick it together you name it and then uh, we're ready to go so that's where we're going to leave this episode the next episode i'm going to start putting the rings together so they're back to being um three three main pieces and that's the point we'll get john to join in with the one the other one that we're building and then we can start working from that point onwards and we can explain the differences like um you know like this is part of the leg but, but i think the leg we got for the other one is all one piece so we can sort of explain the difference between the two um but yeah so we'll get a lot of building coming up soon thank you very much for watching we'll see you again soon bye bye